Hello my dear friends and thank you for joining me for another whimsical mixed media project for all and create. My plan is to squeeze in other brands in between but so far my personal life has been too stressful but I'm working on it. Today I have my Catherine Pooler inks out along with a 7x7 inch panel and I'm using masking tape to mask off parts of my panel. I'm using the colors Lime Ricky, Limoncello, Tiki Torch, Party Dress, Flirty Fuchsia and Grape Crush. I start with Lime Ricky and I'm using a blending brush and blend that vibrant green both under and over my masking. I have one blender brush for each color family but I don't use the same brushes for these dye inks as I use on Distress Oxides because that would contaminate my ink pad. Next I blend in Limoncello, but I discover that my ink pads are a bit dry and they are not sold in Sweden, so finding refills with reasonable shipping will be hard. So I continue blending and letting it take time to build up color. I continue with the orange Tiki Torch, then Party Dress and Flirty Fuchsia. I'm going for an evening sky and I chose these inks because they are so vibrant. For the rest of the panel I blend Grape Crush and take my time to get a thick coat of ink from a quite dry ink pad. When my sky is finished I bring out a darker green called Grass Skirt and I blend it in from the sides. My last touch on this panel for now is to bring out Black Soot Distress Oxide ink and darken the edges to enhance the feeling of an evening sky. I pull off my masking tape too aggressively so I would get a white spot where the tape took some color off but it is easily fixed with a brush and some ink on my surface filling in that spot. Next I have a stamp set called Road Trip number 411 by Janet Klein and I stamp that car in Versafine Onyx Black ink which is permanent and won't smudge when I add ink and water. I have three Catherine Pooler inks to color my car, the orange Tiki Torch, which will be my highlight, Tutti Frutti and Rocking Red. I color in each section of the car with the orange, then I map out where I want my shadows with the middle tone Tutti Frutti, and I use the darkest Rocking Red to deepen the shadows even more, and I blend it all out with the lightest orange Tiki Torch again. These vibrant inks may be too dry to effectively ink blend, but they work great for watercoloring and I purposely leave that highlight in orange until all my shadows are in place before I blend out harsh lines with that orange again, working a section at a time. I masked off a part of my background and that is because I want a road for my car. I bring out that road trip stamp set again and this time I will use those white lines in the middle of the road. I place the lines on my road stamp in Versa Mark embossing ink and cover with Wow's Vanilla White embossing powder and melt the powder. And I do that procedure three times. It is hard to see white on white embossing but the lines will show up as soon as I add color. I bring out a Versamark embossing pen containing the same sticky ink as my ink pad and I use the pen to fill in the insides of those lines so they will stay solid white and resist when I add ink. Next I mask off that road again but this time around the road. Then I bring out Black Soot Distress Oxide ink and a brush 
and blend that chalky black ink over my road. And when I have enough black, I use a paper towel to buff off any ink still on my white lines. That is why it's called emboss resist, because the white lines resist the black ink. I use my heat tool on that masking tape because the heat allows the tape to come off without damaging the background. I should have done that the last time, but I am impatient. So let's move on to the stars of the show Beauty and Beast number 632. I plan on coloring Beauty and her beast with my Uhuhu alcohol markers, so I bring out Memento Tuxedo Black Ink, which is an alcohol marker friendly ink that won't smudge. As usual I have all my color combinations ready before I start coloring. That allows me to have a flow when coloring. I start with four shades of brown for the beast. I color in the whole beast with my lightest to saturate the paper and make the blending easier. And then I start adding shadows going darker and darker until I blend them together with the lightest brown again. I use the same browns to color in his eyebrows and then I use three warm grey markers for his horns and nose. I want his jacket to be black, but black in itself is flat and not really a color, so I go for three cool dark grey markers. A rule I have is to make the shadows darker than one would think. Because when it's all said and done, those dark shadows make a difference in the depth of the image. I use three skin tone markers for the skin on Belle. And then I use the same brown markers as before to color in her hair. And then I want her dress to be white, but I have the same problem as with black, with white being flat and not a color. So I use two cool light greys and a colorless blender to make her dress white. For the shirt and teeth on the beast, I do the same as on the white dress using cool light greys and a colorless blender and then I bring out a gold gel pen and add gold to his cuffs and pockets. For Belle's flower eye I use three shades of pink and I also add some pink to her mouth. Next I have a stamp set called On Cloud 9, number 577 by Janet Klein, and I stamp the houses, the leafy border and the cloud, but I end up not using the cloud in the end. I stamp in Versa Fine Onyx Black ink because it is waterproof and I want to use the Catherine Pooler inks to color. To color the houses and the whimsical leafy border, I bring out all the colors from the sky and car. And I use two colors for each house and the two green inks for the border. If any of you lovely friends out there know how to get a hold of Catherine Pooler ink refills without selling your soul for shipping, <laughs> I am so grateful for suggestions. And as always, I am so happy that you are here, spending some crafty time with me. I have this stamp set called Blooming Doodles number 508. If you feel worried, 
that I might take this too far with too many images. I hope you will bear with me and see if you think I took this too far at the end. I stamp the flowers in verse of fine onyx black ink and as before I use the same inks uh, in the same colors as before to color the flowers. When I have chosen my base colors, I rarely introduce new colors because keeping the same colors in more than one place helps to tie these images together with the background. Believe it or not, I am going to step up this background and I'm going to use a stencil called Heaps of Hearts number 134 along with an embossing dauber and Ranger's purple tinsel embossing powder. I masked off some of the stencil and then I use a makeup sponge to stencil with that sticky embossing ink. I cover it with that purple tinsel embossing powder and melt with my heat too. I am so happy with these purple glitter hearts. Now let's start putting this page together and I start with those green leafy borders gluing three of them in front of the road. Next I put foam squares behind one of those borders and I glue it in place. Those foam squares will allow me to tuck images behind it. Next I glue down two houses flat and one popped up on foam squares. I put foam tape behind one flower and it wasn't easy getting foam tape on that stem. Anyway, I glue the flowers among the group of houses. Next I do the same procedure again. I put foam squares behind a border and tuck in two houses behind it flat and one house on foam tape. And then I put foam tape behind two more flowers and glue them down trying to achieve depth in my scene. It's time for our beauty and beast and I glue them to the car first. Belle is driving and the beast is feeling the wind in his fur and I glue them to the car and I put foam tape behind the car and glue it to the center of the road. For sentiments I used three of the sentiments from the road trip stamp set. I stamped them in VersaFine onyx black ink and I heat embossed them with WOW's clear super fine embossing powder. I fussy cut the sentiments and three slightly larger pieces of cardstock. Then I bring out Catherine Pooler inks in Limoncello and Tiki Torch. I blend Limoncello first over those cutouts that will go behind my sentiments. And then I blend the orange from the sides, framing my sentiments. And then I glue the sentiments onto my ink blended pieces of cardstock. I 
glue my sentiments in place and then I feel I must have yet another flower with foam tape behind it in front of the road and half a border on the left side. Then I bring out my white gel pen and add highlights to pretty much everything. Last but not least, I add glossy accent to Belle's eye, the horns on the beast and the centers of the flowers. And finally, this all and create mixed media page can be glued in next to Peter Pan in my disc bound journal. Thank you so much for following me on this journey. Until the next time, happy crafting. <laughs>